Hello, my name is Sinead Brannigan, Community Sports Development Officer with Waterford Sports Partnership. Today I'm joined by Fiona Crotty Laffin, former Waterford Ladies Gaelic footballer and mam to Michaela, who's 12 and is currently the Waterford Under 12 County Champion for Ballyduff GAA. Fiona, can you tell us of your experience playing sports growing up? Okay, I suppose I had a very, I suppose, a great experience playing sport. Um, as a child, I started playing when I was about seven or eight. I started playing football, but um, I come from a place called Ballymacarbury in West Waterford, and uh, we had a really good community game structure up there. Um, and my own mum was involved in the um, in the committee, um, so we had a variety of sports: athletics, gymnastics, um, and Gaelic football that were involved in in the community games. Um, my own sister coached me at that early age, and. Uh, um, I suppose we started, our success started at community games level uh, when we won two All-Ireland Finals. Um, so yeah, and it just took off from there then. I got involved uh, with the county at under 16 and minor and senior level. And uh, I suppose I was lucky in a sense to come from a very successful club. So I have some great memories and great experiences of, of sport growing up. Brilliant. And can I ask you, what kept you playing sport? What kept you going down the field? Um, well, I suppose initially my sister, my sister's a phenomenal ladies footballer and um, she would have been playing junior for Waterford at the time when she was coaching me. Um, and back in 86, Waterford were in the All-Ireland final and um, she made a little bit of piece of history. It was the first time that ladies football was actually played in Croke Park and uh, she opened the score line. She scored a goal or a point actually. So she was the first lady to ever score in Croke Park, which is, was amazing. Um, so, and then I suppose I, at a, at a very young age, would have been going to all her games um, and the likes of Bernie Ryan, uh, Bridget McGrath, uh, Mary Ryan, they, these were all the great footballers that I suppose started a very successful club in, it started building I suppose a very successful club that is Ballymacarbury Ladies Football Club today. Um, so from watching them and seeing the successes that they were having and you know just the friendships that they were building and the buzz after the games and all that, you just want to be part of it. Um, and as they say, I suppose success breeds success. So there was a right gang of us that would go down to training every Saturday morning at, from a very young age. And then um, as you got older, you were kind of training three or four nights a week. So we were nearly spending more time with the girls than we were with our own families. And we, we, we became great friends. We became like a family unit, you know. Um, so I suppose when you start winning, you, you're just hungry to, to win more. Um, and the friendships that we made down there, that's what kept us down there. And um, we had a, a fantastic coach, Michael Ryan, and a fantastic structure uh, in the county. And Michael was involved at county board level as well. And Bridget McGrath, who would have been playing in goals when I was very small and watching the Ballymac team. And she then uh, joined the, the management team. And um, I suppose that the passion that herself and Michael showed, it just, it, it filtered down to us. Um, so th that passion and the love for the game was just instilled in us from a very, very young age. Um, yeah, so that's why. So all those names that you mentioned, they're all your role models, you could say. Absolutely, absolutely. When you're a little eight or nine year old girl and you're standing up in the stand in Croke Park and you're watching those girls playing in Croke Park, um, making history, it's, it's, it's amazing. And you just want to be out there. You want to do that. So you want to play for your county. You want to play for, uh, in Croke Park. And that's what keeps you going. And now Michaela is playing ladies Gaelic football. And do you think having a role model for being one of them yourself is really good for Michaela? Oh, 100%. Look, I mean, as, as the hashtag says, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Um, like Michaela has seen me play football because even after when I, when I retired from, from county and club, I went back playing um, the Gaelic for Mothers in Dunhill. And uh, I suppose when I came back down to, when I started, when moved into this side of the county and there was no ladies football club here and the club approached me and asked me would I help setting up one. Uh, Michaela was only two at the time. But, you know, having a little girl, I suppose I kind of wanted her to experience what I had experienced um, so it was an easy uh, it was very quick yes I will I will help to set up the club and it's grown from strength to strength and you know I can see the benefits that she's reaping from it her confidence has built 
um, through sports and she excels in the pitch and it's probably where she's happiest, you know. Um, and I can just see her grow and grow every day through sports, it's amazing. And can you see that transfer into our day-to-day -day life? Like Michaela's 12, so Michaela's in school, so what kind of values from playing sport on the field outside there does Michaela bring into school then? Well, I suppose um, what she's getting from it is, is uh, teams, it's a team sport, you know, so um, it's, it, I suppose the consideration for other people um, she's very good in fairness to her to bring on other girls as well and, and to encourage people and even at this age it's definitely standing to her going into school and you know it's easier for them to make friends I can see it not just for Michaela but some of the other girls that are coming down and they may not necessarily be you know very confident going into school or they might find it hard making friends but they come down here and it's all about you know playing together as a team and nobody's any better than anybody else and we, we instill that in the kids from a very young age down in, in the club. Um, but I think not only is it, is it benefiting her now, but it'll certainly always benefit her, you know, going forward. Would you have any, um, not tips, but kind of ways that parents can really encourage the girls to get out and be active? You know, there's times when it is hard to get the teens out of the bedroom and outside or even inside to do some class maybe. How, yeah. From your experience, what would you say? Um, well, I suppose we, it, it, it's important uh, for parents, I suppose, to take uh, a very active and a supportive role. Um, to instill in the girls particularly as well that it's okay to prioritise physical activity and, and not feel guilty about it. I know sometimes as a mum you feel guilty, like I, I have a, a 14 year old boy at home as well like and I spend most of my time down on a, a football pitch. Only a couple of weeks ago I actually said to my husband like there, I've been on the pitch seven days a week like you know for the last couple of weeks um, when the lockdown was lifted and stuff. So. Um, I suppose it's very important that we can prioritise that and, and not feel guilty about it. Um, I suppose it's, it's very important as well to encourage girls to take, um, to, you know, to take up sport at a young age um, and it becomes just part of their life then. Fiona, do you think things have changed in sport when you're seeing Michaela's involvement now versus when you were involved in sport? Have things changed? Uh, well, I'm not that old now, so <laughs> um, yes, they have very much. Um, I think particularly for for women in sport, I suppose the, the the social media has definitely helped to encourage participation. Um, kids love to see pictures of themselves up on Facebook, from you know, on the club Facebook page. They absolutely love to see action photographs or photographs of themselves holding a plaque, or so that's definitely encouraged um, other kids to come along. Um, I suppose the other side of it, how it's how it's changed. I think at an older age, uh, you know, an under underage. I was involved in the under sixteen county management team last year, and it's nearly semi professional at this stage. You know, they're getting nutritionists in, and they're doing uh, yoga classes for flexibility. And you know, it's not just all about kick and ball. Um, so I think like that that was unheard of. I suppose back in our day when I was uh, playing under sixteen. Um, and I suppose looking back, I, I do remember at under 14 going off to Mazany and the, the, maybe a week before we went to Mazany we, we, we um, had fundraised and we had bought these shell tracksuits and we were the bomb going off in these <laughs> shiny tracksuits, you know. Um, and, but like I suppose from a club level, like we had very little, we didn't have any gear like apart from our jerseys and our socks and we bought, we bought the socks and shorts ourselves like and we got the jerseys. but. You know, the, nowadays they have everything from headbands to beanie hats to to um, the half zips, everything. You know, they're all kitted out, and which is fantastic because there's a real sense of uh, you know a, a collective and, and and very much a, a team at that stage. You know, when they're all kitted out and they're all looking the same. And I think, like in fairness to um, with, with ladies football, anyway, like the involvement with from TG Carr and Lidl, the the sponsorship has just been phenomenal. I mean, the advances that that has given and made in ladies football is, has just been amazing in the last couple of years. If you could tell yourself, talk to yourself and tell yourself something from when you were playing as a teen, what would you tell yourself? I suppose relax and, and enjoy the moment. I, I'm, I'm trying to think back, you know, of, of times when we were successful in winning All-Ireland finals and, 
you know you just need to live in the moment and you need to to cherish that moment and uh you know understand that success is not going to last forever um yeah and so i suppose i would tell myself to 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 cherish that moment and to remember it um and to live in that moment for now because it won't last forever wlr imro local station of the year WLR.